I think not only in robotics, but in computer science and technology, Singapore is really pushing very hard and probably we are pretty much uh, on the top. At least the university where I am is the 10th best university in the world, but the technology is Nanyang Technological University. It's originally a technological university, so I think uh, we have a fantastic uh, uh, ranking for AI, for example, and we have a big center in robotics, and myself, I have uh, the social robotics, so I think we are doing quite well. Well, we have spoken of robotics since uh, I was young. That means it, uh, in the 80s, everybody was saying we will have a robots with us, and we didn't. Now it's a bit more true, but still, where are they? So this uh, story of robotics, uh, journalists or the hype had put them that it should be there, but it's not there. Even Nadine is still an example. We have few is the reason why we speak of them. So it will take a couple of years, but I think the next robots to come are cars, trucks, drones. This is more online because it's also less difficult when you interfere with a person, you have to understand their personality to be socially correct and so on, it's quite complicated. But for a car, you go on a highway, you know, you, you, the, you know the path, you, at least for highway, it's easier to have automatic behavior because it's not so much interactive. You get the map and then afterwards you adapt and you continue by yourself. So this is the technology we will see. Singapore government has uh, uh, 2020 plans, so they focus on energy, water, uh, all kind of uh, sustainability, and of course robotics is part of it. So they have many programs and they push very hard uh, to come number one because in Singapore, one, uh, let's say, willingness of the government and of course of everybody is to be number one in everything, you know, best aeroport, best uh, university, best everything. So in technology, we push hard in every domain. Actually, you know, as I said, we don't see them. I, I don't see them in Singapore and I don't see them here. but. We are on the way because on 1st of July, we will have uh, Nadine going to work for uh, an insurance company. So she will be uh, giving the ticket, you know, that people are waiting on the waiting list and give explanation of different cases. So we will see, and it will be an interesting case because it will be probably the first robot to work officially for a company. So you see, we are still at the infancy also is now more than 30, 40 years we speak of robots, but it's coming. And I speak of humanoid robot, which is more new. And of course, because Nadine will have to see all kinds of people and adapt to the questions and the requirements. So this come, it's coming. Mm -hmm. I think that we are going, we are not going, but we are since quite a while with internet, internet of things, robots, all kind of things. We are a digital society. So it's useless to think I just strictly learn something outside that because we, are, we have to go into the train. The train is a digital society. So people have to learn at least what is a robot and know more in detail about it. They can go in medicine, in law, in whatever they like, but behind it will be the use of AI, robots. So they need to be interdisciplinary and learn about it and not run away of it because they, they will be lost. This is the key issue that people, absolutely young people have to invest time to understand their digital society. I was in Canada as a young professor and one of the main things we were discussing 
as I was in computer science, we discussed how Canada can promote more women in engineering. But this was in the 80s. Now you come with the same questions. And last week, I heard the same question in Singapore and in Europe, we hear the same questions. So it's complicated, I think. Uh, women are, uh, it's difficult for me to speak because I don't speak how I feel. I speak for others which are different than me. But I think women are more interdisciplinary and afraid of the hacker words. You know, they think that if they go for psychology or political sciences or communication, this is more the human word and they are afraid to go like these hackers, you know, and which I understand. The problem is we have to offer to women uh, more a diversified uh, program. I was on the European Research Council one month ago and it's what I proposed. I told computer scientists stop to offer only programming, uh, you know, robotics, data structure, physics, stop it. Off offer a program where you can make philosophy, communication, and some soft, soft skills, but at least offer that. So it needs to break this male corporation, you know, because in some way they, they feel Superman because it's an exclusive club. And the women feel that if you go inside, you have to go to an exclusive club. And you, myself, I was very often alone because I don't belong to this male club. So it's something that needs to be broken, and I think I have more hope now because interdisciplinary is a key issue. The guys are a bit different than in former time. And I think we will come to an interdisciplinary program where we offer more soft computer skill and all kinds of other things. And maybe even men will come to that. So, you know, it's like gender change, you know, and we will go to that. But it's slow. It's really slow because we face the problem of having few women in technology, I mean, in most countries, maybe not in Brazil or maybe in China, because, you know, in China or India, I've, I have uh, three ladies who are Indian in my lab, because there you don't choose according to your uh, taste. You choose only to have a job, so you know that jobs are in technology, so you do it. But let's say in countries where we still have uh, not a survival choice, but you can live uh, with doing something else, you still do something else.